Summary of Flatland by Edwin A. Abbott Flatland is a world that lives on a two-dimensional plane. The people who live there are geometric shapes, and they live in a society that is very structured and divided into groups based on how many sides a shape has. The main character and narrator of Flatland, a square, writes from jail. He describes in great detail how his country works and what he has learned from the Holy Sphere. In the first part of his treatise, a square carefully describes the social setting of Flatland, where the circles, the priests who make up the highest class, strictly enforce natural rules. Men are full shapes, while women are simple straight lines. At the bottom of Flatland society are the isosceles triangles, then the equilateral triangles, the square, the pentagons, the hexagons, the higher shapes, and finally the sacred circles at the top. By teaching Flatlanders to attend to your configuration, the circles keep their power. They limit the freedom of lower polygons and women with repressive policies and institutions, and they put down any revolt right away by executing people. In the second part of Flatland, a square remembers a dream in which he saw Lineland and met a line, who he thought was a woman at first but turned out to be the monarch of Lineland. He finds out that the world of Lineland is truly just a line that goes on forever. There are only two ways to move, and people only talk to each other through hearing. A square tries to explain to the monarch what the second dimension is, but he can't find the right words because left and right don't mean anything in Lineland. He also can't get past the monarch's stupidity and narrow-mindedness. The monarch gets angry and strikes a square, which wakes him up from his dream. On the last day of the year 1999, a square is sitting at home with his wife and thinking about what his grandson said earlier that day. As a treat for doing well in sight recognition practice, a square gives his grandson a quick lesson in rounding. He shows that 3 to the second is 9 by putting together 9 squares that add up to one big square with sides that are 3 units long. After thinking about what his grandpa said, a square's grandson asks what 3 to the third means in geometry. A square tells him it doesn't matter and sends him to bed. As a square thinks about how silly his grandson's question is, a mystery stranger, the sphere, comes to visit a square and his wife. Every time a new era starts, the sphere comes from Spaceland looking for a new prophet who will accept the gospel of the third dimension and spread it. At first, a square has trouble understanding what the sphere is trying to teach him, and he gets angry at his unwanted guest. So, the sphere takes a square literally to Spaceland, where he can feel how solid three-dimensional figures are. From Spaceland, the sphere and a square can look down on all of Flatland, and a square can see his whole house from up there. The sphere then tells him to look at the General Assembly Hall, where the Grand Council, which includes a square's brother, is meeting on the first day of the 2000th year to plan their search for people who claim to have information about other worlds and get rid of them. A square says that he wants to go down to the council meeting and teach the others about the third dimension because he has just learned about it. But the sphere stops him and goes into Flatland to say that there is a land with three dimensions. The sphere gets out of the building before the council members can try to arrest him, but the poor guardsman and a square's brother are sent to jail for the rest of their lives because they saw the sphere reveal dangerous information. When they get back to Spaceland, the sphere continues to teach them about the people who live there in three dimensions. A square, on the other hand, wants to learn more and more, so he asks the sphere about even higher dimensions. The sphere says that there are no other worlds beyond Spaceland, and a square's constant questions start to bother him. When the sphere gets angry, it pushes the square back into Flatland. A square has another dream when he is back in Flatland. In this dream, the sphere goes with him to Pointland, which is the abyss of no dimensions. They meet the monarch of Pointland, who is also the whole world. In fact, no matter what the square says to get the monarch out of his slumber, the point thinks that everything he says and thinks came from himself. When a square and the sphere go back to Flatland, the sphere teaches him the lesson of the vision of Pointland and tells a square to teach other Flatlanders about higher knowledge. He accepts that he was wrong to ignore the other dimensions and starts to teach a square about the deeper secrets that lie beyond the third dimension. When he wakes up from his dream, a square decides to go back to his grandson and teach him about the third dimension, 
since he had figured out what 3 to the 3rd meant before. Unfortunately, just as a square starts to teach his grandson about the third dimension, the Grand Council makes a public announcement that anyone who says they have seen other worlds will be punished. Because a square's grandson is afraid of going to jail for having dangerous thoughts, he won't admit that he meant anything when he asked about three to the third. A square gives up on trying to change his grandson's mind, so he starts writing a book about the secrets of the third dimension. A square is eventually caught after he talks about his time in Spaceland and his ideas about the third dimension at a town meeting. He says that he has been in prison for seven years while writing Flatland, and the book ends with the hopeless picture of the depressed apostle and his failure to share the gospel of three dimensions. About the author Edwin A. Abbott was born in 1838 to Edwin Abbott, who was the teacher of the Philological School in Marylebone, England, and Jane Abbott, who was his first cousin. Early in his schooling, he went to the City of London School. Later, he went to St. John's College of Cambridge, where he got the best grades in classics. He was chosen to be a priest and given a fellowship at his college. He became a priest when he was 25 years old. He quit the fellowship so he could marry Mary Elizabeth Rangeley from Munston, Derbyshire. He taught at King Edward School in Birmingham and then at Clifton College. He became teacher of the City of London School in 1865 and stayed there for 24 years, until 1889, when he retired. After he retired, Abbott spent most of his time on things that interested him in literature and religion. Shakespearean Grammar, 1870, Philochristus, 1878, Onesimus, 1882, and The Colonel and the Husk, 1886, are some of his well-known works, but Flatland is his most famous work. He died in 1926. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.